Okay, so I have everything for my elderberry syrup uh, measured out. You can add more if you want to it. You could add um, grated lime or orange or lemon, uh, depending on what you want. You could add all sorts of different things. There's a multitude of ideas online, but this is just the basic elderberry syrup recipe. And what I have here is about a three quarter cup elderberries. I have about a teaspoon and a quarter of ground clove. Um, I have, let's see, I have three cinnamon sticks, obviously, and then I have some ground ginger. It's fresh organic. Um, I do that. I don't always get organic, but definitely if it's not on the clean 15, I will try to do organic, and especially if it's going to be a homeopathic and herbal remedy. And I have here about two tablespoons or so of ground cloves. Then up here I have some water. And I have three and a half cups of water. And I have some honey from a local beekeeper. And I will be using one cup of raw honey. So I'm going to wait um, for the honey. And I'm going to combine all of this that's measured out in with the water in a... Uh, pot and I am going to just boil it over medium to high heat and then I'm going to start simmering it for a while. So here is my cast iron pot that I will be making this in. Wait until boil. This will be perfect for this flu season. Again, we're hearing rumors of a new strain of you know what, so I'm just gonna be prepared, I'm not scared, <laughs> and uh, try to take our health into our own hands. And let me tell you, it's a lot cheaper to do that than to be spending a bunch of bills that are collected from doctor's offices. I've never been into that and so I would rather just spend the extra money to get some organic ingredients and make some things to stay on top of our health than to just get weekly sick and end up at the doctor's office around a bunch of other sick people and have bills up to our eyeballs that need to get paid off. So it'll take a few minutes until it starts to boil. And then I let it simmer for about 50 minutes to an hour or so. Um, and I will end up covering it with this lid. And then I'm gonna end up pouring it back into this that I had, this jar that I had the water in. Another added benefit of this, it makes your house smell so good. It smells like Christmas because of the ginger and clove and elderberry and the cinnamon. It smells so good. And it tastes really good too. This is definitely something that I don't have to beg my kids to take. They're like, please, can I have some? Can I have some more? <laughs> so it started simmering. So I am going to put this lid back on. Um, I just wanted to let you know, I don't use alcohol, but it can be used to preserve the lifespan. You're only taking you know one to two tablespoons so up to four tablespoons a day that's what I do people might do more but uh, when they're sick but usually it's just one tablespoon every day during cold and flu season just to help prevent because it's so high and potent in <clears throat> vitamin C and A and iron potassium folate and even more than that so it's a really, really good natural homeopathic medicine. It's actually, it's a, elderberry is harvested from the Sambucus tree, and it's been an old folk medicine and natural remedy for hundreds, maybe thousands of years. So, um, many people use it around the world for, uh, for this purpose during cold and flu, flu season just to prevent illness, or to shorten illness, or to ease symptoms, um, even to help with constipation, or inflammation, joint and muscle pain, 
it's really, really good. And it's really high in vitamin C. And so that is a vitamin you definitely want to be taking during cold and flu season. So this is something I like to keep in the house all fall and winter long. And I'm getting an early start. Today is the first day of September, um, Friday, September 1st. So we will start taking it probably tonight. And um, because I've been hearing about illness going around. So I'm just going to let this simmer now after telling you all about that for the next 50 minutes. And I'm going to get some stuff done while this is simmering. All right, so I took the cinnamon sticks out and now I just want to squeeze any remaining juice out from the berries. So I'm just using this potato masher. You could juice it. You could use a wooden spoon to try to get it out if you're against, um, you know, metal. Things like that. Stainless steel, I guess this would be. So yeah, I'm just um, mashing it all. And then I'm going to... Then I'm going to pour it into a smaller bowl through this strainer. Uh, or you could use cheesecloth, which I do have. Sorry, it's kind of a mess over here. But I have some... A lot of cheesecloth in here but I'm gonna save that for something else I don't mind if there's bits there's nothing that's gonna get larger than these holes though in there so it will be fine I might do it a couple times there's some ginger up there all right so I'm just gonna take this little Pyrex bowl and dump it in here so here's some of the elderberries I'm just gonna kind of smush out any extra juice it has a, that potent vitamin C in it I want to get all I can into this syrup then what I'll do with the rest of this is just go, oops, bring it out to our chickens it's really good for your chickens they love it, it's a really nice treat for them so I'm left with this beautiful syrup and now I'm going to add one cup of honey Okay, so you will want to store this in an airtight container in your fridge uh, don't leave it out on your counter because it does have honey, uh, sugar in the honey, and it could end up fermenting, turning into alcohol. I suppose if you're using alcohol anyways, then whatever, but <laughs> it might end up more like a wine, I guess. I'm not 100% sure on that. All I know is, yeah, you don't want it to ferment, so... Um, go ahead and just store this in your fridge and it will last a couple months and I'm gonna use a sharpie and write on the glass container when I made it just so I'm aware of how much time goes by before we finish it all um, we will I'm sure finish it all this really didn't make that much so next time I make it I'm gonna triple the batch um, I'm guessing this will give us half of a jar um, half of this quart to maybe maybe three quarters I'll see so yeah I gave us about half a jar and so I'm gonna close this up put it in the fridge after I write the date on it and I hope you enjoy this video and that you make some elderberry syrup also it's so good and it'll be healthful for you and your family this autumn and winter and it tastes so good it tastes like autumn and winter <laughs>